Welcome back all, this is Daz from Motorara Techniques. So up this week, we're going to be turning my previous ATX power supply, which only had five 3.3 and plus 12 volts DC into a variable power supply with a potentiometer. So without further ado, let's get started. Few weeks back, I turned an ATX power supply into into a, a very into a three output DC power supply. So it had a 12 plus 12 volt, five plus five volts, and a plus 3.3 volts. Now, this one I found online, so I will credit the person who's done this this photograph below and an instructables step by step guide if you want to follow through. It's actually a really nice little tutorial. So I've opted against going the the minus 12 volts so we won't talk about that so what we're looking at doing today is how we're going to turn this portion with a a buck converter to make it a variable power supply now the only thing is doesn't have on this picture here you'll see this little blue box here on the buck converter that normally uses takes a, a little screwdriver and that's the potentiometer so we'll, I'll show you how I remove that and I will then add a new potentiometer that we could put on a fascia plate to control a variable output DC power supply. Right, so we'll quickly show you the, the connections here. So on this version of, for this diagram, he's using the plus 12 volts because he's got a step down inverter or buck converter. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use 3.3 because we got a step up converter. So we're gonna swap this out with an orange cable, so I'll show you shortly. I'll just splice off another orange cable. That goes to the input of the buck converter, and then we just use the common ground or negative into the input of the negative of the buck converter. Then from there, the output side, we're gonna be going up to upwards of 20 plus volt. So we go through the, the input of the fuse, and then the output goes to the binding post, and then the output of the, of the buck converter goes to our negative DC output. Okay, so what we've got here is the very simple buck converter. We've got on the left side here, the voltage in, this is the DC version. And I'll show you how we'll use that on this project. So DC in and then the DC out. So what we've got up here is the potentiometer that we need to remove. So that's going to be replaced with an external potentiometer that I can put a knob on for, the, for this project. Some sort of desoldering tool. I don't know if you've used that, sort of like a vacuum where you sort of pump it in, put it over some heat, push the button and it actually withdraws the, the solder off the, the soldering board. It can be a little bit of a tedious process on occasions, but um, it gets the job done. And obviously the other tool you're going to need is a soldering iron. So what we're going to try to do here, we've got the, the solder pads just here, the three of them. And then I'm just going to, obviously I've got the helping hand here because it's trying to do this and also record this all at once is rather difficult. So it's just a matter of on this right hand one, add some heat. We'll go to the second one. Sometimes it takes one or two passes or two or three passes I should say. As you can see, it's a little bit of a tedious process. Sometimes you gotta be a little bit careful because I wanted to try to preserve this little guy maybe for a future project. So often with little pins like that, you can break them. So it's up to you what you wanna do. If you don't wanna keep the, the part, that's fine. You could probably be more ruthless. You just gotta be a little bit careful. You don't burn out your, your traces here. It does make a little bit of a mess. You can see around here, um, just purely the solder come down. So um, be mindful, these parts from China, they might not use uh, such as eco-friendly or health-friendly, friendly er, I should say, uh, types of solder. So just be very mindful of, of the fumes when you are soldering from any type of solder that is to wear the correct PPE. Now, so what we need to do now is these little traces here or holes, I'll just quickly get a little drill and I'll just drill out the remaining solder um, ever so slightly. And then we'll attach some wires to that to attach the other potentiometer to it which is this little guy. So we'll use this little guy here to replace that. 
So when I tested this, this is a, the, the 10K multi-turn potentiometer is what it's called. So I just got that off eBay for um, about $10. Um, unfortunately, you probably get them cheaper if you wanted to go AliExpress or something like that. But for the sake of this project, I wanted to get the part a little bit quicker. So all we're gonna do is get some, some wire, three different, three different color. It doesn't really matter what you use. You just gotta make sure you line up the correct pin orientation with the pins on the other, the new potentiometer. So we're gonna just wire, so solder the cables to these, these traces here. So it's just a matter of, well, very easy, just, now I won't bore you with tinning all the wires. So then I just quickly tin a length of wire. Obviously I always go just a bit, I always go a little bit longer than I actually need it. So then I can trim it back to the correct length. So then it's just a matter of going through with all these wires. I won't show you all, I want to show you one, what we're gonna look like. Give it a quick, quick test and then you just go into the next two. Then we'll get over to the orientating the potentiometer correctly. So now we've got all the three wires there. What I'll do, I'll go through, we'll orientate that potentiometer and then we'll give it a quick test. So I'll see the other side. So we'll give it a quick test. So currently we've got feeding in three volts. Now being this is at three volts where the little gauge here is a little bit, a little bit hard to see and blown out on the footage. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just use my multimeter to show you how much voltage we got going in. So a shade under three volts and then on the output. So this is a buck converter that is a step up version. So we'll then go outbound. So currently we're gonna to go to 10 volts. So I've already got a three and a five volt. So I don't, I don't see the need of being able to go sort of blow sort of those voltages anyway. So if you have a look when we turn this anti-clockwise, you can see it's just slight movements for the, on the potentiometer gives you an increase and you can go right around. I think this, this version of buck converter can go up to about 30 volts at five amps. I won't do that today. So we, we can get up to 16, 17, 18 volts quite easily with pretty well three quarters of a turn of the potentiometer. So what I'm gonna do with this, this, this project is obviously take it out and I'm gonna mount it properly on my, my workbench around my computer at the layout room. So I've always, over the years, I've always just found it difficult. I've just had wall warts or little transformers just running when I'm doing electrical uh, testing and the like. And also it's not a part of this circuit, but a part of the face plate that I'm gonna make is gonna be also a DCC. So I can have uh, ready, readily available DCC signal and output from my DR, sorry, my Roco Z21. All right, so this is the power supply that we're gonna look at doing now. I did do a, a more, an in-depth video on how I put this all together. So I will link that in the description below. So in short, a, uh, an old piece, uh, PC power supply where I've got various voltages that come off. So we got the, the negative or the ground and we've got three, five, 12, three, five and 12 volts in the various outputs here. So the orange being three, five and 12. So all I've done, I've just grabbed another orange cable off the back end here. I don't know if you can see that. There's obviously a lot of you unused power cables here that I've terminated off. I've just grabbed another one. So what that's gonna do, that's gonna feed into our, our buck converter on the, the input side. So between that and a, a ground or a negative or input, so we can then control the output for our variable power, a very variable voltage power supply. So before I show you how to do all that, let's have a quick word from my sponsor, PCBWay.com. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or advanced electrical engineer, PCBWay have you covered. They are passionate about PCBs, but PCBWay do not stop there. They are also into 3D printing, injection molding, and CNC machining. Check out their awesome services in the link below, and also a special offer to anyone who supports my channel. So what we've done here is added on the output side on this terminal here for each of the various voltages. So these little guys will go to, so these cables here will go to the binding posts, and I'll show you that very, very shortly. So what we're just gonna do here is to test. What I'm gonna do is we're just gonna switch power supply switch on now we've got 3.3 volts coming in now you probably 
may not be able to see that and blown out obviously cable management is going to be my next issue here so this is just stuck down with a piece of blue tack just to get you in frame so frame so what we're looking at we're looking at about 3.48 volts coming in so that's a little bit off there so an output currently we are at three volts so an output we're currently at three volts so what I'm going to do is I'll just put so the output side of this buck converter just be mindful where we're going to go up in voltage so you can see how we're now up to so an anti-clockwise we're going up in voltage So we can go up to probably 32 volts, which is probably what I don't need, but just to give you some sort of idea. So probably where we can do, obviously with this power supply on the output sides that I've set up on those other binding posts is only an output of 12 volts. So I can go beyond that up to, you know, and not the sky's the limit, but you can go to voltage past that. So I suppose just what you need to work out is whether, what you need to work out is whether where you want your starting voltage to be with a an upscaling buck converter. So this one obviously starts at three, three and a half volts and voltage goes up. You can get other ones that the voltage will come down. So, or a step down they call it. So you can start at say 16 volts and bring it right down to your three and your five volts that way. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna turn this boring piece of MDF board into something that looks half reasonable out on the layout room with the binding posts and the fuses and just a little bit of labeling so we know what everything is okay so on screen there we've got the the template that goes over the, the mdf board uh, for the face plate so all i've done here is i've drawn this up on microsoft publisher measured all the the sizes of all the binding posts the leds the switches and everything else and then i've just used a really sharp surgical blade to to cut them out so i didn't want to sort of show you that uh, that that portion of it just for the interest of keeping the video as short as we can so then what will happen with that that'll get overlaid onto the board so i still got a little bit more work work to do on the mdf board two and a half mil mdf board and i just drew up all my centers um after overlaying the template like like such very quickly and then drew them out uh, drew them out obviously got a little bit of work here to do where the meat is going to go so what i'll now do i'll now laminate that on there with some contact adhesive spray all right so here we got the the finished product with the fascia so i'm reasonably happy with the way it's come out now obviously i've gone through for a little bit big fat little bit bigger fascia just purely because so we can spread things out a little bit uh, i have made a few mistakes i believe with alignment sort of on this this part of it but that's uh, live and learn that's for sure so i'll probably i won't go back and change all that so now we've got all the positive dcs across the top with their respective voltages so i've got one binding post or one negative or ground per won't be using any more than two outputs at any given time the fuses along the bottom here got one for each output including the variable the dcc i'm not going to worry because that's got its own short circuit system if required so i got some feedback on the initial video that i did about fuses i was using probably too large a fuse so it sort of suggested maybe between three and five amps these are currently three amp fuses in here that's just so if we do have any issues they you'll get a little bit quicker response for the uh, uh for the fuse when it blows to protect the protect the rest of the system so also back on the right hand side here we've got the on and off switch uh, I don't know whether you can see there's the green LED that's actually illuminated on the right hand side here. So if that's illuminated it means we've got 240 volt or 120 volt depending on which part of the world you're in um, to the actual transformer. Uh, so the PSX transformer. And once we turn this, this on we've got a little blue LED which you may just be able to see under the potentiometer knob there. That's to say that the system's live and ready to go. Then we've got the, the potentiometer that will that's directly connected into the step up buck converter that runs the variable voltage and I'll show you that very shortly. So what we'll quickly do, I'll just quickly show you all the voltages and if you just wanna cast your mind, uh, sorry, your, your eye over to the multimeter here and just see how reasonably close they are. So that's 3.3, so with 3.4, so that's pretty good. Let's go over to the five volts. So the five volt is nearly smack bang on. Then we've got the, the 12 volt here, which is pretty close, 11.96. 
and then we've got the variable I'll just leave those hanging in there so you can see we're currently at 11.8 which is pretty good so if we go counterclockwise you'll see we're going up here so at 15.2 there and 15.18 there so we'll just put that back to around 12 and that should be good to go as I said I haven't connected the DCC I'll do that out in the layout room but that's that's given so I can actually have DCC when I'm playing around with stationary decoders or all the like or where I need a DCC signal so that's the end of the video so thanks for watching as always I've always got three questions now number one is um, is this the sort of system that or setup that you may use I'd be very interested in the comment section in below to what people are actually doing out there to get some various voltages um, I use the various voltages for my Arduino work and also if you want to test any lighting and the like which is always good to have some 12 volt plus and um, some layout lighting and number two if there's a way that you might look at making it function better or customizing it to, to suit your needs in your on your layout room or your workbench and number three as always if there's any glaring errors here please let me know and i'll um will amend maybe in a, in a subsequent video or how could i have proved this this simple little design to to move forward to get various voltages make sure you hit that big thumbs up to show that you like this video that's so the youtube algorithm keeps putting my top my videos or similar types of videos in front of you if thanks for watching and i'll see you next time make sure you subscribe Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Techniques.